Hi guys. So today is the first time filming on this camera. I've filmed on this many times before in the past with like my other YouTube channel, which if you don't know about that channel, we have a second YouTube channel, we being me and my husband called The Sweet Life of Zach and Christy, where we share like homesteading and like projects we're doing on the property, yard work, f planting flowers, worm bin, cooking, like it's literally everything that this channel is not. We use this camera all the time on that channel, but I have never used it sitting up here with all my connection point stuff going on. Essentially what happened was, sad day, my camera died. The camera I've been using for the last like seven years, the one that turns me orange, will no longer record. I have beaten this camera to absolute shit, taking it everywhere with me, and it's officially dead. I tried, no batteries will work in it, even brand new batteries, they just, it just shuts off instantly, and I have to push record 8,000 times. So I think it's officially dead and I'm so sad about it, but we had a second camera. So we're filming on this guy today. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it looks good. Hopefully it sounds okay. What I'm gonna be doing today is a Q&A. I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me anything you guys wanted to know and I was just, I'm just gonna answer it and put my makeup on today. I'm a little bit close because I'm on a 50 millimeter lens. I can't zoom or unzoom this thing. It's just a prime lens. So hopefully it's not too close, but I think it's totally fine. All right, so I'm just gonna start putting my makeup on and I am going to answer your guys' questions questions that you wanted to know. I'm gonna spray my face first with the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I've been doing this and instead of using a moisturizer, it just makes me moist and I like it. So I'm just gonna put my makeup on over the top of it. So first questions, I'm gonna try to avoid a lot of questions about motherhood if I can in this one. It's the thing that I care about the most, obviously in my life. I'm gonna answer some questions in like relation to myself. I think I might do a separate motherhood Q and A. So I, I would like to know if you guys be interested in that because I know that there are people that are here that aren't really interested in that. So I, I'm gonna probably answer some questions related to it because it's literally what I do all day long every day. I think that maybe I might do a separate one. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Have you ever considered quitting being public on social media? Mm, good question. Well, of course I've considered it, but it's just like one of those passing things that is very brief. Um, it's not something that I would actually consider doing, I don't think at this time. I actually really enjoy it. I've been like working through it in therapy to try to figure out what am I, what is like my purpose? I don't know, it's just really hard to know sometimes like what you should be doing or not. Like, am I doing the right thing? By the way, I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty Glowish and this is in the shade. 03 light. It's a little bit too dark for me, but I lightened it up with some concealer. It's very glowy, but it's pretty. I don't think that I will quit doing social media. It'll always just transform and evolve. That's just the way that, like the nature of social media. Uh, you can't be doing the same thing forever. I mean, like people change. So I just feel like that's what's gonna happen to me is that as I change, I'm just gonna evolve and change online. I found that, you know, there have been times in my life where I don't share what's going on with me. And I, I like that in a way, but in another way, I really like sharing. Okay, so like I'm planting this beautiful flower garden here and we're really landscaping our yard and we're making it really pretty. And I was thinking about like, am I doing this just for me? In many ways, yes. But am I doing it so that people will come over and enjoy it and be able to see it and I'll be able to share it with other people? And the answer really is yes on that. Because if I was just doing it for me, would I go this hard? I don't know, probably not, maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Because I will say that I have discovered that when I share things, I put more effort into them. I don't know, I guess it's like a a cake. Like you're gonna make this big, amazing, awesome cake with like all these different beautiful like decorations on the outside of it and learn how to do this like awesome piping and then just sit down on your couch and eat it alone and not show anybody. I don't know what I'm looking for. Am I looking for praise? I don't think so. I think the reality is that in nature of people, we like to be in community and we like to share things with other people. And I guess I thought for a while there, like this is all just for me. And in one way, I think that's true. But in another way, it's like, is it true? Because would I be doing all of this stuff if it's not to share? So I noticed that when I do share and I am more active on social media, sharing with people like the projects I'm working on and like showing people the flowers I'm planting, I'm more likely to put more effort in and care more. And so I like to share things on social media. I like to be online and to have community because I don't actually have a lot of community in my real life. We are very isolated out here in the middle of the woods, but not just because we live out here. I don't have a ton of friends. Like I do have friends, a lot of people that I consider really 
good friends, but most of them live in other states because I met them online. So I have community, but it's not actual like local community that much. And so in order to feel like I have people that I'm talking to on the daily, Social media, baby. It's really positive for me in many ways. There, there are negative parts of it as well, but mostly just to do with where I'm at in my cycle. Cause you talk to me on one day and I'm like, roll off my back. And then the other day I'm like, oh, I'll fucking kill you for saying that. <laughs> are you pregnant? In fact, I am on my period. Are you ever getting a puppy? Okay, look. My husband wants a dog. My son probably wants a dog. Every, who doesn't like puppies? I love dogs. I love them. I think they're sweethearts. I think they are so good. They're big old doofy lovers. Love me a good dog. Could I go the rest of my life without owning a dog? Yes. I worked at a vet for five years. I have seen all the things dogs have eaten, all of the surgeries dogs have gotten because of things that they have eaten, the amount of diarrhea, the amount of vomit, just TPLOs, tearing their ACL. The list goes on and on and on and on. Love dogs with my whole heart, but I just am like not mentally prepared to have one right now. My husband wants a dog so badly. And of course we will probably get one one day. It's a hurdle for me to get there to want to get a dog because they are such a huge responsibility. Now people all the time are like, dogs are superior to cats. I hear you. I will say, Dogs are wonderful angels. I love them. I love wrestling up a doggy. I think they're the the best. Like I, this isn't because I don't like dogs. I'm so aware of the type of lifestyle that a dog needs to be outside constantly. Lots of play, lots of walks, lots of running, lots of, and when we have the land for it, we have the property, we have all that. It's not that. It's like taking it out in the middle of the night to go potty and like accidents. This just doesn't happen with cats. Cats are just so independent. They're like, give me a litter box and some food and water and we're living on pure vibes. Like cats are just so self-sufficient. They need for very little. They You don't have to take them outside. Like we built him a catio, which I will actually link up here if you guys wanna watch us building this catio. We built him at, they love it. They go sleep on their blankies all day. Like I'm just a cat person through and through. And it's so hard for me to want to get a dog knowing that it's like having two toddlers. I already have a toddler. I, I just cannot imagine having a big old slobbery poop machine. I love them. I would love on it. I would love it for the rest of my life. And it's beyond all of that too. There's a connection with dogs that transcends. Like they are so good that like the idea of having to say goodbye to my best friend one day, like, no, thank you. I just, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Are you still using your salt menstrual cup? Yes. Yes, I am. Love it. I'll never not use a cup. Like it's literally the best. Um, there's definitely like pros and cons, but if you want to hear me talk all about that, I have a video in depth, very, very, very graphic content, not graphic visually, but graphic. You can hear me talk all about the salt menstrual cup and what I think about them and how they are to clean and how they are to have. And I used one for six months before I made the video. So I've been using it for like a couple of years now. Love it, wonderful. Even after having kids, like just wonderful. I have no, no negatives other than I can't use it on the first day of my period because it gives me really bad cramps. But other than that, that's literally anything going in there. It's just not happening. Yeah, if you guys wanna watch a video all about uh, menstrual cup, like uh, probably not the first thing you wanna watch, but if you are interested and you have been interested, I go through all the nitty gritty details. What would I do for a job if I I wasn't doing YouTube. Honestly, I would probably still be in social media. I feel like I would be like a social media manager or I would do some kind of like administrative work somewhere online. I would do some kind of not consulting, but I don't know what I would do. I might honestly do Airbnb for a job. Like I might manage Airbnb properties or like I would want to do something building wise or something landscaping. I might work at a plant nursery. I might own a plant nursery. I feel like that's kind of the area that I would take things. Ugh, my makeup looks like absolute shit. Right now in my life, maybe it wouldn't be in social media, but maybe it would be in like editing. I might do like video editing or I, I don't know. I would, I would love to own a plant nursery one day. I think that would be really, really cool. Maybe a retirement plan. I don't know. It's funny because my other camera makes me look more like beauty filtered. This camera is very true to reality of like 
it's not forgiving. It's not forgiving at all. This is more realistic to what I actually look like. And the other one makes my skin look more blurred and everything like that. So if you see me looking down here, I'm looking at like, I don't have my typical monitor, which is right here. I don't have the right HDMI cord for this camera, but I have my cam my phone down here and you can see myself, I can see myself on it. And man, I look really textured. What's in store for the year 2023? Gosh, I just wish I knew. I don't know what the future holds for me, but I do know that in personal life, life goals and things like that. I want to continue working on our property. I really want to build up our second YouTube channel. That is like where I'm just, my passion is lying right now is in homesteading and gardening. We have built an, a giant garden on this property. We have done an, an insane amount of like landscaping and work. And we are just really trying to get this place to be vibes. And it really is becoming that. I'm so, so, so pleased with the way that things are turning out here. I'm, I'm, I'm literally in love with it. Um, I don't know what next year is going to bring like personal growth. All I know is that I am really happy with the way things are going right now. We are potentially gonna be building some more structures on the property here and maybe another one somewhere else. We are just like trying to figure out what life is going to look like for us. My son is becoming, I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about motherhood, but like, <sighs> I just cannot even describe. Like he is such a best friend right now. He is the light of my literal life. He is so smart and funny and he has comedic timing. And it's like absolutely amazing. Like if you get down and you ask him for a hug, you'd be like, can I have a hug? He looks at you in the eyes and goes beep, beep, beep. And it starts backing up. It's so funny. Like he is just an absolutely hilarious, hilarious little guy. And I'm just enjoying it so much. I want to travel with him um, just in the United States. I want to do like some road trips. I think I might consider getting, I was thinking about getting an Airstream, but they're just so expensive. So if you guys have any recommendations that aren't that expensive, they're just, they're so nice. And that's exactly what I'm looking for, but they're just crazy expensive. And I cannot justify spending that much money on a travel trailer. I might, but God, it's so expensive. Anyway, I, I would love to do that. I want to like have him see different climates and different things and different places and we can sleep wherever and we can do like boondocking and we can just, I wanna experience a lot with him before having him. And I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about motherhood, but you know what, fuck it, I can't help it. Before having him, I was kind of cool with just doing nothing all day long every day. Like I was like, oh, I'll just sit around here. I'll just do whatever. Like maybe, maybe we'll travel somewhere like once a year. I just didn't really care, but I wanna give him such a rich and full life that I simply can't not. So I want to show him everything. I want him to experience lots of different things. I wanna go a lot of places with him. I wanna take him to fairs. I want him to see different animals. I want him to experience like nature and wildlife. And that's kind of my goal is to show him the world. And before I had him, I, I couldn't have cared like about traveling or doing any of that stuff. Like it was fine, whatever. But I just, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I don't really have any plans necessarily right now of uh, places to go, but just kind of see how it goes as time progresses, I suppose. Uh, there's something stuck in my eye. Do I have any tattoos? No, I don't have any tattoos. Changed my mind a thousand times. And I'm really glad I didn't get any of the ones I wanted when I was a teenager. So uh, probably not gonna get any, honestly. Like I, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything by not having tattoos. I might get like a small something to like, have because of like my son because I, I will probably never regret a tattoo like that but yeah that's kind of it how do you manage fear i want a family but i'm terrified of bad mental health and it would negatively affect a kid well i think the thing for me to note is that it has become my number one priority to get out of that space of fear and by accepting and receiving help from a mental health professional, my doctor, medication, all the different things. Like that has been my number one priority because once I had him, I could no longer push all of that to the side. Like I had to face it. I couldn't ignore it anymore. It's not something that I could just avoid. Sorry, I have something in my eyes. It's just like really annoying. So if I'm sitting here doing this, that's why. Before I had my son, I could avoid a lot of the feelings that I was experiencing by just like checking out, just scrolling my phone, watching things all day long, like just kind of, I don't know, go to dinner, go to places. After I had him, you can't just avoid things the way that you once did. I mean, like at least for myself personally, I can just avoid things the way that I needed to. And avoidance was like my 
coping skill. It's just right there in your face. Like you can't really avoid life when you've got to take care of somebody that's not you. And that's what you have to do all day long, every single day. So for me, I had to face it and accept help and receive help. And I would suggest doing that before having a child so that you are already armed with the coping skills before you have a child so that you can not be like I was and in the midst of crisis before I was able to get help. And then it took like a long time for me to get out of that. That's what I would highly recommend is to get that stuff sorted before you start a family so that you are well equipped to be able to handle the really big emotions that come with the transition into motherhood. So that's, that's it's really tough, but um, I manage it by doing therapy twice a week now. I reduced from three times a week to twice a week. I was on three times a week for like eight months. I do twice a week therapy, I take medication, and I actively work towards not letting myself go down negative spirals. I don't Google. I don't try to sit and ruminate and overthink. I keep busy. I eat healthy. I move my body. I get out in nature a lot. I talk to people. I like. I have a lot of different things I do now. Fear is a very strong feeling, but if you let it control you, it can become really debilitating. And I did for a long time. That was that was what I was doing. Yeah, getting out of that, it was really tough, like really, really tough. But you know, it just, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. So basically um, I think that having bad mental health can absolutely negatively affect yourself and your child in the long run. But I would suggest just taking care of that and starting steps to make it better now. Um, whether that be accepting, you know, medication help, talking to a therapist, talking to your doctor, all of that stuff is really good to start now before you even consider starting a family because that is gonna be just a way to hopefully mitigate getting, you know, postpartum depression, anxiety, and things like that. And um, having to struggle with the Poor mental health after having a child is, is rough. It's very common though. It sucks, but we just lack community here in the United States. I don't know if you're from the United States, but I think that there are so many things that go into it, but I saw a statistic the other day that was talking about um, mental health and struggles after postpartum. And it was saying that like pre-pandemic, it was like, let's say it was 14%. These might be just inaccurate numbers, but let's just use that as an example. They said like pre-pandemic, like. 14%, let's say, of moms um, suffered from postpartum anxiety and depression. And then like post pandemic or mid pandemic, it was like 75% or something. Like that's, in, that's insane figures. And so it's not just about motherhood in general causing it, but it's like isolation is huge. I've noticed that when I isolate even more, it's absolutely debilitating for my mental health. I have to be around people very often and seeing people and getting out of the house. And it's something that I naturally want to do when I'm struggling with my mental health is to isolate and not be around people, but it's the exact opposite that I need to do. I need to be around more people. I need to get out. I need to see people. And we are very community driven species. We need to be in community. We have to have people around as much as we feel like we are all introverts. I feel like that is not the case for many of us. Yes, we, we might be introverted in a lot of ways, but we are a community oriented species. We need to be around other people in order to thrive. And I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent here, but in our, society, there is a, a criminally, criminal lack of support for um, new mothers and new parents to where because we have such a isolated society, we do not and I say we as in like America, I don't know what other places are like, but I know that there are a lot of places where like there is a village helping raise children. And th there's that saying for a reason, like it takes a village. If you don't have a village and you're doing it alone and you're struggling, that's because it's not supposed to be like this. We are not supposed to be raising children alone. We are supposed to be in a huge community of people, at least hundred people helping. There's supposed to be other mothers helping other mothers. There's supposed to be people surrounding you, making food, watching the children when you need a break. Like it's supposed to be a huge community driven village of people helping raise children. That's what it's supposed to be like. We are supposed to be in that village. The way that modern society works, we all separate ourselves into our own homes. We lock the door. We don't see anybody. We we don't have huge families. A lot of people move away, states away from their families, and we are alone. And then we wonder why it's hard. It's because it's not supposed to be like this. It, and it's fine, it is, and this is the way that we have to handle it. But then we have to understand that it's going to take a lot of work to get out of that struggling mental health space. And it's not that you are just weak or why is is this so hard for me? No, it's so hard because this is the antithesis of the way that we're supposed to be doing this. There is supposed to be so much support and so much people wrapping their arms around you in love and feeding you. You're not supposed to be alone in your house all day 
with a baby or a toddler, making all of the meals, doing all of the entertaining, just like trying to keep yourself sane. It's supposed to be a team effort. And it's not in in our modern society. And so we wonder why we struggle. It's because it's literally like against nature. It's against human nature of how we're supposed to be raising our children. It makes me feel better knowing, am I just weak in this? No, it just is hard because there's no help. Where's the fucking help, you know? If you do have a huge community or, you know, a big village, that's amazing. And that's gonna be the way that is the most helpful. I don't even know where I was going with this. Just to say, if you are a parent and it is hard, it's because it is and not because you're weak. It just is. Like, we're not supposed to be doing it like this. So anyway, tangent over. There's a question that I get many, many times in here, and that is, along the lines of what do you think about losing your personality and now that you've become a mom? You've lost all of your personality. Like I get that question all of the time that I've lost my personality, that I am just a mom now. It's all I care about. It's all I talk about. I think that is such a shitty thing to say to somebody. I, I kind of understand it. I was talking to my therapist about it yesterday because I was talking about how it's not true. And hear me out. I think a lot of people remember me how I was and they think like, you've lost yourself and your personality. You're not that same Christy that we once knew and loved. And I think back to, and my therapist asked me like, is that true? What do they mean? And I was like, oh yeah, no, 100%. Like, yeah, the Christy that I was back in 2017 saying fuck every other word and making obscene jokes and trying to make people laugh, little joke, joke, joke. You know, staying up till two o'clock in the morning, filming YouTube videos to where I was deliriously tired and trying to do the next big thing and trying to always like be on and trying to joke and be the funny, little funny one. I was like, that Christy's not gone. She kind of is like, I'm not staying up till fucking two o'clock in the morning anymore because I'll be up in three hours with my kid. I'm not gonna do that. So in a way, the Christy that cussed all the time and had all these things that I was doing to constantly pump out content and constantly like always be reviewing the next biggest and best thing and talking shit and all of that. If people say that my personality is gone, if that was my personality, then so be it. Like if my only character traits and personality traits were that I was a cussy mouth reviewer talking shit all the time about makeup, then then fine, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that I have changed so much and that I'm, I'm a completely different person. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it because uh, I feel like I'm actually really similar of a person. I just have developed a new side to myself. It's not that that old side is dead necessarily, it's still in there somewhere, I guess, but I'm really not going to stay the same just like you haven't. And I think it's kind of a little bit societal. It, it, it shows a clear idea that once a mother becomes a mother, that's all their personality is and their personality has died and what's happened to you, you've changed. No shit, literally, obviously. This is the biggest transition of anybody's life. And if you don't believe that, then you don't, I don't know what to tell you. It's impossible not to change. How could I not? I went from being somebody that would sit around all day watching The Office and petting cats and just like po poking around outside to I don't have a singular minute to myself that's n that's not engulfing my brain with the thoughts of something that could happen to this little being that I created from nothing that I now have to care for 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the literal foreseeable rest of my life. How could I be the same person? How could my personality not change? And sure, there are people that you can like see online whose personalities seemingly don't change or that they don't let motherhood, let's say, become their entire personality and they stay the same. And if that is them, like literally fine, you can do whatever you want with your life. Like, I just like don't care, it has nothing to do with me. I think a lot of that is like, for online, it's, I mean, and I, I can't speak for other people, but it's like people have built their brand online and they don't want that brand to die. This is their livelihood. This is what's really important to them. They need to make sure that people stick around and stay. And so a lot of people, I think, feel pressure that, to stay to where their old selves and not show any sort of change or growth or difference in their personality because it's scary. The internet will shift on you and tell you, fuck you. You need to, you need to be who you were. You've changed. And it's like, I guess I just look at that and I, I, I'm sorry to go off on such a tangent, but like, who gives a shit if I've changed? Like, if you don't like it, who are you? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I have I have a kid now and I know that it's frustrating when people change and you maybe liked the way that they were before, but like, I'm, I am who I am now and you telling me that my personality is dead or changed, like, what am I supposed to do with that? 
what does that even mean? I guess like what is a personality even anyway? Isn't a personality like created by the things that you do all day long and like the things that you find interesting and the things that you love and the things that you cherish and like the things that you say, then your personality is different from yesterday too. Like, I don't know. I just find that maybe people think I've dulled down because I'm a little bit more PG now and I kind of shit on brands less and I sort of like, I have different things that I talk about and yeah, like motherhood is like at the forefront of what I do all day long. So of course that's like the thing that I talk about a lot, but if you don't like that, I, I literally can't help you because it literally is what I do now. It is my personality now. And if you don't like that, and if you think that that's a dull thing, that's pretty fucking hurtful because that's like the thing that I am now. Like my kid is obviously the thing that I care about and talk about the most. And if other parents and moms don't do that, like fine, I don't give a shit, but that is what I am choosing to do. And if you don't like it, that's absolutely your prerogative. You don't have to watch people on the internet simply click off the video. That's totally fine. You don't have to follow my Instagram stories if I talk about kids too much. Funnily enough, people say that a lot. Like, all you do is talk about your kid. I, li I literally that day had talked about a bird. I had talked about my garden. I showed my flowers. I showed my uh, new backyard and the grass growing in. I showed the clover in my yard. I talked about how we went to Home Depot. I actually hadn't even talked about him that day, but it's funny that like, that's what people see. It's like, I don't know. I'm just going off on a tangent. It just kind of is, it's like, there's no winning. Not that I'm trying to win, but it's just like, you can't, you can't win. If people want to think that you're different, they'll think you're different. And I'm, I am, I am different. Sue me. I can't help but be different. My life has changed. I, I've completely shifted who I am as a person. I now don't do any of the things that I used to do. And I only do things that are new to me. I am different and I will be. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Is there any animals you don't fuck with? Mmm. I don't like things that jump. I absolutely will never kill them. I don't want them anywhere near me though. I don't want frogs. I love frogs. I love crickets and grasshoppers and all these different things that I'm talking about. Don't touch me. Don't get near me. I don't like erratic things that you don't know where they're gonna go. That's why I can handle things like anything. I know a bird is flighty and I know they're gonna get fearful, but you can kind of like see where they're gonna go. But like a frog will just be biting and then hop. A, 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 cr a cricket and a grasshopper, like they just, they're erratic and they, I don't like things that could get potentially stuck in my hair. I don't not like them again. Like I totally like all animals and creatures the same, but I don't want you getting stuck in my hair. <laughs> How has your body changed after baby? Is it losing weight harder? I don't know, I'm not trying. I don't care. Like I have not paid attention to what my body looks like. I have no, I was talking to my therapist about this yesterday too. I have no connection to my body image. I do not care what I look like. I don't care what I weigh. I don't care what my stomach does or doesn't do. I don't care how clothes fit me, what I look like. It's absolutely completely on the very back burner for me. I, I don't, I, I don't know what I weigh right now. I care a little bit about, I care about my health and the way I feel. So I do eat healthy and all that stuff, but I don't care about what the scale says. I have lost probably about 50 pounds since I gave birth. That's it. And that was just, I mean, I'm still breastfeeding. I eat relatively healthy. I eat low carbs again, because it helps my uh, mental health and stuff. But other than that, like I, I don't, I've, I have no idea what I, way and my body has changed, but not that much. Like it kind of looks the same, honestly. I just have a way more stretch marks. <laughs> I gotta find my lash glue and I don't have a clue where it is. I don't have a clue where it is. Can't find it. So I guess we're not doing false lashes today. I had them all ready to go too. I'm just going to curl and do my lashes, I guess. You know, I totally didn't remove my previous mascara from them. They're gonna be weird looking, but you know what? It's the risk we gotta take. How is my marriage now that we have a toddler? It's good. We absolutely argue now more than we ever have in our entire lives. They're all really minuscule, stupid arguments. We were not arguers. We never argued. We never fought. Now these, these are not fights I'm talking about. They're all stupid little petty arguments, but they matter now. And you know what I think it is? I think it's literally like, you're just tired, you're exhausted, you're touched out, you've been talking to a, a toddler all day long. It's not their fault. It's just the way the cookie crumbles, dude. Like it's just, you're tired and you're at your wits end and you feel like you're stretched completely thin in, and then put a relationship on top of that that you have to like, it's just hard, dude. It's just really hard. So uh, yeah, we're fine. We're totally good. I will say that it absolutely relates to where I'm at in my cycle. I hate to blame things always on hormones, but 
but I have PMDD. So I am absolutely more sensitive at certain times of the month. Like, just don't talk to me. Don't look at me. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want you to talk to me ever again. And I want to go live alone in a cave. No, we're totally good. Like we get along. We love each other so much. We still tell each other we love each other every day. We still do everything that we ever once did but we're just, we connect less, I guess, because we're just exhausted some days. Like it's just a lot, dude. But we're, our marriage is totally strong. We're gonna be together forever. He never like, you're, you're stuck with me, baby. Any collab launches in the works? Nope, <laughs> nothing. How do you keep from getting discouraged when stuff doesn't go right with the homestead? Okay, so I have uh, this really interesting like personal personality thing where I do not sweat the small stuff. My husband absolutely sweats all of the small stuff. So we have a very, very different personality traits in that way. If a tomato grows and it has blossom end rot, like it sucks, but I get over it. If we spend all this time on something and it dies, like I just, get over things really, really quickly when it comes to stuff like that. I don't know what it is. I don't have, I don't have the space for it. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the mental capacity to get all bent out of shape about something that I cannot fix, especially when it comes to like plants and growing things and doing all that kind of stuff. Like it just is literally going to do what it does. I try my best. And then if like a plant gets aphids and it kills the whole plant, like it's freaking annoying, but I have to let it go. I cannot get caught up in shit like that or I just, it'll drive me nuts. So I want to continue enjoying the things that I do. And so I'll just try again next time. I gave it my best effort. And if I didn't, I didn't. And if I, if, if, I don't know, I just, it doesn't bother me. How are you doing? I genuinely just want to check up on you. That's extremely nice of you. Thank you so much. Right now I'm doing okay. Um, I, you know, I'm in a good mental space right now. I am four days sleeping without lorazepam. Oh, I am not taking, um, that anymore to sleep right now. I may need it again in the future if I go through another episode of struggling, but I'm recognizing that through a lot of therapy, I get stuck in emotions really, really big. That's something that I have noticed about myself is I, like if I feel really tired one day, I'm like, wow, I don't know what's going on with me, but I'll feel tired forever. Every feeling I feel feels permanent. And through a lot of therapy, taking medication, through all this stuff, I've recognized that one day I could literally feel so horrible and so tired and so defeated and so awful. And the next day I do feel fine. And this happening over and over again, where I don't get stuck in the spiral of emotions and feelings and all of that kind of stuff. I have recognized that every feeling is fleeting, good and bad, and that I am going to get through it and be just fine. So that is really, really, comforting because when I'm having a bad day now, before I would get literally trapped in the feeling and I would feel like this is this is who I am forever. Like I'm gonna be an anxious, depressed, worried person forever. And then as time goes on and you're not and you have good days and then maybe you have a bad day again, I'm recognizing that that's literally called being a human and that there are good and bad days and that you don't have to get trapped in those feelings because it is not true. It is fear making you feel like you're gonna be that way forever but nobody ever feels one way forever. So uh, that has really helped me out a lot. And therapy has been extremely beneficial for me. Like I, I could not recommend it enough and the lack of access to therapy and mental health services in America, again, like I could go off forever about how America doesn't take care of people. Like I can't, I can't even, I can't. But I'm doing pretty good right now. I always really hesitate to say that because speaking aloud how I feel mentally makes me feel like if I do backslide in any way that I, it's almost like I jinxed it. It's like, it's like, I don't know, dude. It's just, it's just an anxiety thing. I feel like once I state it, now it's fact and I told you guys I'm better and now I'm not better. And now that's because I said it, that's just not true. I'm gonna have bad days again. I'm gonna have good days again. I might need to take sleep medication again. I might not. So right now I'm doing really good. I'm trying to stay in a good space. I'm trying to recognize that I have PMDD. So when I am having a hard day, I give myself grace. People told me that a million times. They always would tell me, give yourself some grace, cut yourself some slack. Like you're going to have good and bad days. And I never knew how to do that. I couldn't give myself grace because like snap out of it, snap out of it, Christy, like get your shit together. And I'm recognizing now that, yep, I have a condition that makes it hard for me on certain days, depending on where I'm at in my cycle. So on those days, I do give myself grace. I cut myself some slack. It's literally not my fault and I'm doing my best. I'm just doing my best and that's all I can do. That's that. But right now I'm doing pretty good. Trying to keep up on it. Trying to just literally do everything that I know to do to keep my mental health doing well. I really need lashes, dude. Like I feel like this is just not, what is this makeup? This looks like I'm wearing nothing on my face and I look like I need more. I'm gonna do something to my lips. These lips need something, I don't know. Eyelash glue, where the shit are you? Okay, this is crazy. This person asked, why is now what, but could when it how? What? 
I've answered this many times before, but I get this question probably more than any other question that I've ever been asked. And that is, what is your reasoning for not showing your son's face? I have a good guess, but just curious. I just, it's not my face, man. I, I did show him in the beginning and I shouldn't have probably, I don't know. I, any parent can do what they want to do. I guess that's just kind of how I think about it. Like you have to weigh the pros and cons to what you think sharing your child will be and i don't know the social media is so new i just why does the internet need to see him i get it he's literally so cute it's unfathomable he's the cutest baby i've ever seen in my entire life literally of course every mother says that about their child but he's actually he he's a beautiful specimen he's gorgeous he's literally so absolutely darling it's 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 criminal it's the choice that i've made and i'm sticking to it so I, I do share certain things, like I'll show him walking around. I just, it's his privacy and I will never share anything private about him. I don't wanna do that. I don't know, like I don't judge other parents for sharing their kids. I do judge people like the Ace family and like, is it like the LeBrants? I don't know who they are, but like people who literally exploit their children and like show them having like very vulnerable moments online and like say, being like stuck in a, uh, like I don't like the, clickbaity sensational headlines and like when people put their children in videos and exploit them and they literally have no privacy or anonymity whatsoever and it was not their decision and the parents aren't sharing that revenue with them and they are not like they are literally using their children for clout and fame and like these children have no say on what happens to them and what are shown on the internet to literally millions and millions and millions of people for their entire lives and like they're being used as props for their internet fame like it's miss me with it. There's nobody that can convince me that that's okay. I get it. The parents want money for people not to take into consideration that making their child like the forefront of their brand. I'm talking about family vloggers like Ace Family and shit like that. I don't even know if they're relevant anymore. But like, I think the LeBrant family, I saw like a video on them. I'm not even sure who they are really, but I don't watch stuff like that. I understand why people started off doing family channels and stuff like that. I think they just take it too far and they show way too much. And there is no way that that can be good for a developing brain. We don't know that much about social social media yet, but I think what we do know, it paints a very clear picture of what it's like for children and it can be very damaging. I think that we need to protect our children and not exploit them, but that's just me. I don't think that people showing their children online is like a problem if it's not a problem for them. It just was for me. And so that's what I'm not, I'm just not gonna do it. I've had, I had some like inappropriate messages come through and I was thinking to myself, what is the benefit? So some people online can feel like satisfied that they got to see his face for two seconds. Whereas this is a lifelong thing for him. You know what I mean? Like this is his life. He, he gets to choose when he, or if he wants to be on social media. And once he does or doesn't, that's his decision. Like it's totally fine. And I know he's just walking around with like buckets and shovels and stuff like that. And like showing the back of his head, like it's, it could be any kid. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't want his likeness to be out there and i don't know i just wanted to leave him the decision to him and i think that that's fine that i do that i understand why it's frustrating for people though this person said christy how do i stop giving up i'm really not the one to ask for that maybe i mean it's really easy to get stuck into feeling like either people care i just genuinely think people don't really care what i'm doing people don't really they're more concerned about what you think about them versus what they're thinking about you. I do care what people think about me as a person, like my personality and if they think I'm nice and if they think that I'm, I don't like it when um, I'm misunderstood. That really bothers me being misunderstood. People thinking that I'm one way that I'm not. That is just the nature of being an influencer. Like everyone's going to make their own opinion of you. Every single person I've ever met in my entire life has a completely different vision and view of who I am as a person. And I am different to every single person because everybody has their own version of you that they've created. You know what I mean? It is not my job to change anybody's opinion of me. It is my job to be who I want to be as a person. And what you think of that person is completely up to your interpretation. Some people might think I'm the nicest person alive and might be like totally vibing with my personality and who I am. And there might be other people that loathe me and I'm the same person through and through. I'm exactly the same. I say the same things. It's just personal interpretation. Like some people like certain foods and some people don't. I might be for you and I might not be, but I don't, care in that I know the version of myself is what I feel comfortable being. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that if somebody doesn't like you, uh, boo fuckity. Like it makes no difference to my life. 
in any way, shape or form. Cause if it was somebody that I cared about or like saw often, or it was like one of my friends and they had a problem with something that I said, like they would let me know personally, but like the internet, random people, I'm just nice. And I, I give off the vibe that I think is appropriate. And I'm sure you do the same thing. You are who you literally are. And so you don't need to care because there's literally nothing you can do to make somebody else's opinion of you change. Like I just might have one of those punchable faces that you just are like, I cannot stand that face. Or you might think that I'm so darling. Or you might think that I'm like, eh. I cannot help what you think, but I can help what I put out there. I guess recognize so much that like I get literally one life and I could sit around worrying about what everybody thinks about it or I can just live it. I don't know. I just simply really mean it deep in my soul. I don't care at all. Specifically what people think about what I look like, but also you might just have to get there. I don't know if it's something that you can practice. I'm sure that you can practice just like not caring. I wish I could teach it. I wish I could dole it out. I do, I do care though in a lot of ways. Like I don't know how to describe it in any way other than like when people think that I'm one way, like specifically about motherhood or they think that I'm like really complainy. I get that comment a lot. Like you complain a lot. Okay. I don't know. I don't think I do, but uh, apparently I do because a lot of people say that. You might take it as complaining and somebody else might be like, that's so refreshing because you were so honest just now. I can't help what you interpret things as. There are glass half empty and glass half full type of people. And you're gonna get both. Like I get, literally, I will post a story and I'll have so many people be like, preach, yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. Thank you. I feel validated. I feel so seen. And then to that same story, people were like, wow, you're so complaining. You're so lucky. You're very in a privileged position to be able to, I get it. There are, and again, this is all interpretation. So I can just say how I feel. And either you're gonna be like, same, or you're gonna be like, I hate you. I don't know. That's so like, fucking can't, you can't win. Okay, well, my camera says that it's overheating. I didn't even know this was possible with this camera, but cool. The camera temperature has risen. Stop shooting if you're in shoot mode. I'm gonna do that. Hope you guys liked this video. That was somewhat interesting. I will do a Q&A about motherhood specifically very soon. I'll like maybe pick through these questions and see if you guys have any ones that are specifically relating to that. I know I answered some in here, but you know what? I think it'll be good to kind of separate the two. And this makeup did not turn out at all how I hope because I don't have lash glue, but that's fine. I'm not going anywhere today. I do have an appointment at 1230 with my retirement account people. Cool. So uh, yeah, I thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you guys like it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you at my next video.